Millions of dollars in questionable contracts, public funds paid out for work that doesn't appear to have been done, and a high-ranking state employee signing off on the whole mess in violation of Virginia law. A News investigative reporter A.J. Legault digs into allegations of fraud at the State Corporation Commission. Located amidst the hustle and bustle of downtown Richmond, at the intersection of 13th and Main, sits a government agency with a hand in more facets of your life than you probably realize. A portion of every power bill you pay, every phone bill you write a check for, every insurance premium you scrimp and save for, goes to fund the State Corporation Commission. The SCC regulates how a lot of business is done here in Virginia, but we found how they do business behind these closed doors leaves a lot to be desired. For the SCC to regulate and to criticize public companies and then to act what looks like this way internally certainly is bizarre at best. Mike Thompson's the executive director of the Thomas Jefferson Institute, a government reform group. These are the kinds of things you would expect to go on 1932, not in 2013. He reviewed what we uncovered. A good inspector general type person ought to be on this tomorrow at noon because this is just th th this is pretty bad. We began investigating after receiving a tip from a group of state employees who could no longer idly stand by as many unethical and potentially illegal activities take place. We began pouring over hundreds of pages of SCC contract documents. What we found here is a sweetheart deal worth millions of dollars being paid out of public funds to one company that got the job with no competition. Back in 2008, CGI Technologies and Solutions Inc. was brought in by the SEC to perform analysis on what was to become the e-file system, which provides online payment and filing services to the public on the SEC website. Right at the beginning, the deal was fishy. Under this state IT contract, protocol is to allow more than one contractor the opportunity to bid on the work to determine the best overall value for the Commonwealth. That was never done. CGI was the only contractor approach to do analysis on how to build the electronic filing system. Then, in what appears to be a flaunting of the spirit of the Virginia Public Procurement Act, CGI brought in to do the initial analysis, developed the design, and then was given the contract to build the system with no competition. The deal's initial price tag, nearly $3 million. We're talking a lot of money. Then a sole source contract was issued by the SCC claiming CGI is the only company qualified to do the job. How they know this is anyone's guess. Remember, against procedure, they never even requested bids from any other companies. So why was CGI getting this sweetheart deal? And what is this picture hanging on the wall of the SEC's chief administrative officer possibly have to do with it? Follow me here for a second. The State Corporation Commission CAO is Danny Payne. Payne is Virginia's former commissioner of taxation. During his time as the Commonwealth's tax czar, Payne's department awarded a mega contract worth well over $100 million to a company called AMS. One of the main players at AMS was Dean Merrill, listed in this 2002 audit as a vendor project manager. AMS has since merged with CGI. Within a year of Danny Payne's appointment to run the SEC, CGI was hired with no competition allowed to build the e-file system. The whole time, agency insiders tell me this post photo of Danny Payne and Dean Merrill hangs in Payne's office. That original $3 million contract ballooned to more than $7 million through a series of contract modifications and exclusive sole source, remember that means no bid, contracts. The first sole source never even justifies why CGI's price is reasonable, something Virginia's procurement manual clearly says must be a part of the file. In multiple contract modifications, CGI is awarded a lot of additional money. This one's for an extra $805,000, resulting in a 27.6% hike over the original contract amount. When a contract in Virginia goes up by more than 25%, who has to sign off on it? Uh, it's either the governor or his designee, uh, and I am the governor's designee. State code clearly says no contract may be increased by more than 25% without the advance written approval of the governor or his designee. The Director of Department of General Services, Richard Slavowski. But look who signs off on the contract approval. Danny Payne. Oh, in these contracts, is that your signature and name? No, it's not. The exact same thing happens again. 
This time, CGI is awarded an additional $782,000, more than a 25% increase. Danny Payne again puts his John Hancock where only the governor or DGS director should. From my viewpoint, I would question whether they were valid or not. What does this look like to you? It looks like an abusive position for approving these. We repeatedly asked Danny Payne and the SEC to comment on camera. They refused, but told me via email there's currently a state audit that's being done. And as a result of your inquiry, the Auditor of Public Accounts has authorized the Commission to advise you that this current audit, which included the CGI contract and other procurement transactions, found no evidence of fraud, abuse, or impropriety. We'll see if that's actually the case, as the audit is due to be released within the next 30 days. Now, our investigation may give them some places they might want to look a little closer one. Uh, absolutely. All right. So the SEC is actually uh, run or overseen by three commissioners elected by the General Assembly. AJ, where were they in all this? Well, that's right. At the end of the day, these three commissioners are in charge of what happens at the SEC. The buck stops with them. So far, my request for interviews with them have also been denied. Taxpayers are apparently getting a raw deal as the result of a sweetheart deal signed off on by a state agency. A.J. Legault joins us with more on his investigation into the Virginia State Corporation Commission. And A.J., you have uncovered a six-figure check for work that was not done? Christina, that certainly appears to be the case. We found Virginia State Corporation Commission acting like a state unto itself, appearing to flaunt and circumvent Virginia code and procedures. And what we're about to show you now is a six-figure payday for work that couldn't possibly have been done as claimed. In our previous report, we documented what appears to be a cozy relationship between the SEC's Chief Administrative Officer Danny Payne and the Vice President of CGI Technologies and Solutions, Inc., a private IT company that's been paid and is still being paid millions of dollars to first design and build, and now service and support, the e-file system, which provides an online payment and filing services to the public on the SEC website. A picture of the two men posing together hangs in Danny Payne's office. Well, it certainly shows that they they're, they're friendly, and it certainly, you know, saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words. Um, when you review these documents, you wonder whether that statement should be amended that a picture's worth millions of dollars. And we are talking about millions of dollars awarded to CGI without any other company getting a shot at it. The contract originally for about $3 million has ballooned to more than $7 million through contract modifications that by law need to be pre-approved by Governor McDonald or this guy, Rich Slavowski, the director of the Commonwealth's Department of General Services. Did you sign off on any of the contract increases between the SCC and CGI? God, no, I did not. In black and white, right below where the law is stated on the document, you can see Danny Payne signs off on it. The whole thing, frankly, brings up just so many questions. Some of the other serious questions surround this document, contract modification number eight. In a previous contract, CGI agreed to do 20 days of live support once the e-file system launched, for which they'd be paid $100,000. This document shows the project was completed on March 21st, 2012. But get this, just one day later, CGI Vice President Dean Merrill signs contract modification number eight, which says the 20 days of post-live support have been satisfied. Danny Payne of the SCC then signs off a few days later on the 26th. It doesn't look like they did the work that originally they were contracted to do. 20 days worth of work completed in just one day. Even if daylight savings time started, you didn't pick up that many days. <laughs> and yet, CGI was paid in full. Here's the invoice they sent in for 100 grand. There's nothing in the file showing what the SEC and therefore taxpayers received for this six-figure payout. It would be interesting to see what kind of justification the SEC has for doing these kinds of things. That's the big question. So far, they've offered no justification, refusing my requests for an interview, only stating that past and ongoing audits have found no problems with their contract with CGI. Yet we've found countless problems, and we'll expose some more tomorrow on 8 News at 6. 8 News investigator AJ Lego continues to dig into how Virginia's business watchdog does business itself. From trains crisscrossing the Commonwealth to the rate you pay for the electricity running into your home. 
even how much the phone company can charge you, how banks and insurance companies do business. Here in the Old Dominion, it's all regulated by the Virginia State Corporation Commission. Is responsible for some very regulating some very important aspects of, uh, of people's lives in Virginia. But this state agency that's supposed to be regulating best business practices for private companies here in the Commonwealth is itself practicing some eyebrow raising business behind its four walls. As we continue to sift through SEC documents, we keep finding more questionable actions surrounding the contract they entered into with CGI Technologies and Solutions, Inc. Does this appear to be government waste? Yeah, it, it, it certainly looks like government waste. In April of 2012, once the e-file project was complete, CGI was given another sole source, no-bid contract worth $1.4 million to provide support services, including providing knowledge transfer, operational and production support, and enhancements, none of which are specified in the contract. CGI employees were paid $175 an hour to do this support work, but invoices we obtained show not a lot of support work being done. In April of 2012, a whopping 6.5 hours of support help was provided. But flipping through the next 10 months of invoices, May 2012 through February of this year, we clearly find not a single other hour of support work was done. This can only lead to one conclusion. Clearly that indicates the agency was doing the support work. CGI only did 153 hours of knowledge transfer to SEC employees. Employees who SEC insiders say don't even actually do support work on the e-file system. All of CGI's time, 5,281 hours worth, was used on enhancements to the system they'd already been paid millions of dollars to design and build. Agency insiders who tell me they can't be quoted by name for fear of losing their jobs say this is a clear case of government waste. They say employees here at the SEC can do the work and private contractors making hundreds of dollars an hour aren't really needed. They tell me upper management knows this but continues to push it forward. In a written statement to us, the SEC contends it's typical business practice and common sense to keep the expertise of the vendor who built the program available. And fortunately, problems have been minimal, and that is why so few hours have been billed. But red flags were raised. Look at these emails we obtained. On February 20th, an SEC employee asks Chief Technology Officer Janet LaFleur if she can document why CGI service continues to be needed when the services were needed for support and knowledge transfer, yet invoices indicate CGI hours were primarily for enhancements. She also asks for documentation on why the $1.4 million for the renewal is needed. Despite those concerns raised internally, the email chain shows only some verbiage was changed on the procurement document, and that's it. Janet LaFleur writes, let's get this renewal issued. For taxpayers, that translates to another $1.4 in public funds being spent as we speak. The documents that you've uncovered, I think, raise some pretty important questions. SEC insiders claim instead of $1.4 million support contract, the SEC could simply have paid CGI their hourly rate for those six and a half hours of support. But they add it just goes to show how the SEC seems to think money grows on trees or maybe in their case, power lines. Well, AJ, what has been the impact so far of your investigation into these issues at the SEC? Christina, I can tell you our reports are getting attention at the highest levels of state government. Now, Governor McDonald's spokesperson issued a statement which reads in part that they'll be reviewing the issues raised in the weeks ahead and will be in communication with the Inspector General's office to determine if that agency can move forward with a comprehensive review as well. AJ, the SEC is now responding to your reports. Yeah, that's right. The SEC leaders still refuse to go on camera, but they have sent us a fairly lengthy written response to some of the issues we've raised about SEC procedures. Tonight, we're addressing one of them. Contracts never put out for public bid, violations of state procurement law, and numerous guidelines and recommendations in place to ensure taxpayers get the most bang for their buck being ignored. That's what we've been exposing. On the state employee fraud, waste, and abuse hotline website, look at what it calls violations of state procurement policy. As we began pouring over hundreds of pages of SEC contract documents, we found a number of violations. Exhibit A, the numerous contract modifications the SEC issued to their IT contractor, CGI, who was awarded several sole source, that means nobody else was given the opportunity to bid on the work, contracts. 
The first sole source never even justifies why CGI's price is reasonable, something Virginia's procurement manual clearly says must be part of the file. The SEC's contract with CGI more than doubled from $3 million to more than $7 million, as work was underway to build the e-file system, which provides online payment and filing services to the public on the SEC website. In multiple contract modifications, CGI is awarded a lot of additional money. This one's for an extra $805,000, resulting in a 27.6% hike over the original contract amount. When a contract in Virginia goes up by more than 25%, who has to sign off? On it. uh, it's either the governor or his designee, uh, and I am the governor's designee. State code clearly says no contract may be increased by more than 25% without the advance written approval of the governor or his designee. That's the director of the Department of General Services, Richard Slavowski. And in these contracts, is that your signature and name? No, it's not. The signature on the contract belongs to the SEC's chief administrative officer, Danny Payne. He signs just inches below where the state law is clearly printed on the SEC's own documents. We found the exact same thing on another contract modification, this one also for more than a 25% hike in the original contract cost. It's worth $782,000. So how does the SEC respond to what we've uncovered? They claim it's long-standing practice that DGS has not issued supervised or administered contracts for the SEC, a policy which the SEC logically understood to include also not approving modifications of the SEC contracts. The statement goes on to say, this practice stems from the fact that under the Constitution of Virginia, the SEC is an independent department of government. They're absolutely correct in one thing. They're an independent state agency and are clearly listed as such on Virginia's organizational chart. But look at this. The SEC's own procurement manual says all their procurement actions shall be in accordance with the Agency Procurement and Surplus Property Manual, known as the APSPM. The APSPM says the only agencies exempt from following DGS purchasing rules and regulations are judicial and legislative branch agencies. And remember, the SEC is clearly an independent state agency. This all adds up to apparent clear-cut violations of Virginia's procurement policy, and we've already shown you how the state's own fraud, waste, and abuse website defines those violations. And as for those big-dollar contract modifications Danny Payne signed off on? From my viewpoint, I would question whether they were valid or not. The SEC statement to us goes on to say, if the SEC's understanding of the appropriate relationship to DGS has been incorrect all these many years, it stands ready to correct it. Well, if you'd like to read the SEC's written response, we've posted it on our website at WRIC.com. Now to a continuing 8 News investigation that has state leaders taking notice. Our own A.J. Legault continues to dig into allegations of waste at Virginia's State Corporation Commission. Our investigation into waste allegations at the SCC began with a tip from a group of state employees who could no longer idly stand by as many unethical and potentially illegal activities take place. We began pouring over hundreds of pages of SEC contract documents. What we found in here is a deal worth millions of dollars being paid out of public funds to CGI, a company that got the job with no competition. Competitive bidding is put into place in order to get the best deal and you don't know what the alternatives are if you're only dealing with one company. In 2008, CGI was hired by the SEC initially to do analysis on a project that would become the e-file system, which provides online payment and filing services to the public on the SEC website. They were brought in under a state IT contract established by VITA, the Virginia Information Technologies Agency. The SEC, in their written statement to us, claims it was the safest and most cost-effective route. However, they don't seem to have any documents showing that a public bid would have been risky and expensive. Under that VITA contract, a protocol is laid out on how agencies should use it. They're encouraged to provide a statement of work to more than one contractor to ensure best possible value for the Commonwealth. After that, contractors provide an estimated total cost, and the agency then determines the best value and places a written order with the selected contractor. But the SEC followed none of those guidelines. 
This internal letter shows how it played out. In March of 2008, a meeting was scheduled with CGI, formerly known as AMS, to discuss a web-based filing and payment application. Then on April 2nd, the SEC discussed at a high level a statement of work. Then the SEC and CGI held several meetings between April and October where a statement of work was refined. That's directly opposite the way the state's IT contract says it should be done. Here's the SEC's justification for that. They write, there was no legal requirement that a second competitive process be followed. They're right, it's just recommended to ensure taxpayers are getting the best bang for their buck. After ignoring guidelines on how to use the Vita contract, the SEC wound up giving CGI a sole source contract to build the e-file system. That means no other company was even given a shot at showing they could do the work. The SEC claims doing a new competitive bidding process would have put the project at risk of a lengthy delay. They claim they had to do the sole source because later, after the SEC e-file project was well underway, Vita announced that the IT contract would expire in late August of 2009. But that statement is simply not true. Vita did not announce that the contract would expire after the SEC project was already underway. Right on the contract's front page, it clearly states when it would end, August 25th, 2009. Many who work inside the SEC question whether CGI was given the multi-million dollar project with no competition because of connections the company has with the SEC's chief administrative officer, Danny Payne. This photo of Payne with one of CGI's vice presidents hangs in Payne's office. In their statement to us, the SEC repeatedly invokes how they used a VITA contract and VITA approved rates and how CGI was on a VITA approved list. They also claim they went with the sole source contract issues because of time issues. But what the SEC seems to ignore is VITA guidelines that state fair and open competition is the preeminent consideration in the Commonwealth and that circumstances which do not justify a sole source procurement include a supplier's capability to deliver in the least amount of time. Now, in fairness, because the SEC is an independent state agency, they're not bound by law to follow VITA's guidelines. But it raises the question, why not follow other state agencies' best practice rules? The SEC's own code of ethics states, SEC employees will perform all duties and responsibilities in accordance with laws, regulations, policies, and procedures. We began this investigation into the SEC when numerous employees came to us claiming their bosses continually ignore or look to circumvent laws, regulations, policies, and procedures. When it comes to the risk of corruption, Virginia ranks as one of the nation's worst states in large part because of lack of public access to government information. A state lawmaker is now pushing to make one of Virginia's most important agencies follow freedom of information laws. It's the same agency A.J. Legault has been investigating for waste and violations of state law. It seems mind-boggling to many, but the Virginia State Corporation Commission is exempt from state sunshine laws, laws that watchdog journalists and concerned citizens use to gain access to information showing how government leaders are doing business that directly affects our lives and wallets. Richmond, the Commonwealth's capital. Here, state leaders pride themselves on a strong reputation of being open for business. But the Old Dominion's reputation for open government is nothing to brag about. An F, 47th out of 50 states. That's where Virginia ranks when it comes to risk of corruption, according to the state integrity investigation. One of the big factors behind that score? Public access to information. One of the main examples listed is the Virginia State Corporation Commission. They're exempt from Virginia's Freedom of Information Act. Given how important this agency is, that it's some, it's, it really ought to be subject to the, our sunshine laws. Just how important is the Virginia SEC? They regulate banks and insurance companies, businesses, railroads, and utilities. They set the rates you pay on the electricity running into your home. And they have a say in how much phone companies charge you. They regulate home insurance companies, all these kinds of companies to make sure that they're not gouging consumers. But we found because of their status as an independent state agency, no one's really watching the SEC to ensure they're 
not gouging taxpayers. State Delegate Scott Suravel is now trying to get a bill passed in the General Assembly requiring the SEC to follow FOIA laws governing other state agencies. I strongly believe that the more sunshine we can place on matters involving our government, uh, the better decisions end up getting reached. The more accountability we have, uh, the better our government actors behave. Suravel cites our investigation into violations of state procurement laws and guidelines by the SEC and the apparent lack of oversight the agency operates under as just another reason his proposal whose bill needs to be passed. The documents that you've uncovered, I think, raise some pretty important questions and, you know, it demonstrates why the Freedom of Information Act ought to apply to the State Corporation Commission. On Monday, the General Assembly's FOIA subcommittee will meet to discuss, in part, the proposed law that would require the SEC to follow Virginia's Freedom of Information Act. In Richmond, A.J. Legault, 8 News.